This is Chris here, back in the video, and today I'm doing an early tuning guide on Forza Motorsport 7. I did one of these on Forza Horizon 3, and it was perceived pretty good, so I will go ahead and do it on this game, because I assume some of you guys are going to want to know. So, first off, it's a little bit different than what it was in Horizon 3, because now there's the hom homologation, I guess that's how you say it. Um, so you can't really upgrade a whole lot if you want to stay in your class or whatever your restrictions are so I'm just gonna go through these things and there are for all these longtime Forza players they will know what's going on so you can skip this step but I still recommend that you watch this part so um, the conversions don't have anything to do with tuning but if you do want to be able to do an arrow tuning you have to have the race rear wing on it or at least a wing that says adjustable as you can see it says adjustable on there so if you have an adjustable wing you'll be able to tune the speed or cornering so I guess I will put that on there uh, all the stuff I'm going to be putting on this car is for educational purposes and I don't know if I'll actually keep it on there so tires are another thing um, they don't really do anything with tuning except tire pressure but that doesn't matter what kind of tire you have on the car that will not affect the tuning pressure but as you can see I can put it up to sport so I have the sport on here for my restriction after that drivetrain in order to be able to tune your gears you are going to need to have the upgraded transmission it will not work with the stock transmission I don't believe it works with the sport transmission um, I'm just going to buy it even though it's going to break the restrictions I need to be able to show you guys what's going on so you do need that and also to tune the differential differential you are going to need to have the race differential on here um, other than that you don't need anything else from this platform and handling in order to adjust brake, pe uh, brake pressure you just need to have the race brakes or an upgraded brake pad on here you can't have the stock brakes I don't believe so uh, I don't know why you'd want stock brakes anyway but yeah uh, basically the springs this is a really big factor now this the springs have like four different tuning options so you definitely do not want to keep your springs stock you do want to have them adjust adjustable even if they're sports you do you do still want to have that adjustability because it, it does affect a lot of stuff now roll bars those are important it doesn't really change the pi of the car it just lowers the weight a little bit and then you can adjust the anti-roll bars and same weight reduction in the roll cages don't do anything for that uh, after that that's pretty much it so you can give whatever else you want on the car after that so that's what goes on with upgrading that's what you need to know about the upgrading so next is the tuning now I'm gonna tell you what everything does what you need to look for in racing games acceleration and cornering it's always better than top speed and braking is always important so you want to keep an eye on that braking distance and you want to keep an eye on that 0 to 100 especially for this car when it has a top speed of 196 you want to keep that there so normally PSI on a race car is going to be a little bit lower for maximum grip I like to use 27 I have a lot of uh, friends I put on Xbox they like to keep their car at 25 some of them have something to do with 28 28.5 I keep mine at 27. It has enough grip without, you know, being too flat. Gearing. This one's hard to do. I used to use an app called Forza Tune or something like that. Uh, but now, I mean, I relatively, I keep these gears the same unless I want to shorten them up a little bit. Really, you only want to mess with the final drive. Like I said you want that better 0 to 100 but you don't always want to place it to the right. Sometimes I go a little bit more for speed and I'll make my first gear slightly longer, just a little bit. As you see, the 0 to 100 got better there. And so yeah, that's what I do with that. I don't really mess around with gearing. You can mess around with it, but normally the gears are the way you want it. So alignment, this one's important now. Alignment is going to do with camber and camber toe and front caster this is all going to affect how you understeer or oversteer so the more negative camber the more oversteer you have the more positives the more ne uh, understeer you have so if you're experiencing understeer and if you don't know what understeer is understeer is basically when you go into a turn like a hairpin or something and you're not turning enough to the point where you can't complete that turn that's understeer and oversteer is the exact opposite 
So this is really dependent on the track. I like to keep a 1.9 and a 1.8 going in the negative direction. It offers enough understeer for most tracks, but you don't want to have, or enough oversteer, but you don't want to have a car spin out. Now the toe, toe is interesting. Now if you have a, a rear wheel drive car, I keep it at negative 0.2. Cause this is going to help with understeer again since the rear, rear tires are going to be driving the car you do want to have a little bit of extra toe on there now if you're experiencing some terrible understeer increasing the front toe to like 0.4 i learned this from good friend les paul obsessor uh, runs a cool grand prix series but he told me that if you increase the front toe a little bit then you'll get a little bit more of that and the caster this is more for drifting and stuff but just keep the angle the way it is you can make it a little bit lower if you want to but the caster doesn't affect a whole lot our anti-roll bars so anti-roll bars it when you drive a car it's either soft or it's stiff stiff being that you know there's not a whole lot of body roll soft being that it's kind of like jelly like there's a whole lot of weight difference so there is a formula for this i used it and I wasn't getting as fast lap times. I just figured out that it depends on the track and the car, but I like to go uh, a sizable difference to the softer side. It helps the car with steering, and it helps the car with braking because it's a little bit softer, so it's not gonna be like complete, like where you can't turn it when you're braking. It's gonna be soft, it's gonna be a little bit jelly, but it's not gonna be too much. And springs. These are important too because this also adjusts how much pressure you're going to have on a spring. Now, do you want to have more pressure on the front side? Do you want to have more pressure on the rear? Normally, just like for this, I put a little bit more towards the soft. There is a formula, but I don't particularly use it. Now, the right height, a lot of people just slam it, but that's not the best thing to do, especially if you go off the, tra uh, go off the track and you hit the gravel or something. I normally keep it two or three above I'll keep it at 7.7 .7 inches and I go two or three above here because you're still gonna get enough aerodynamics but if you go or you hit a bump or something it's not gonna change a whole lot so yeah that's what we got for us going there now the stiffness this is kinda just like the other part of the anti roll bars it's kind of the same principle that basically like when you're driving how much pressure is going to be putting on the suspension when it's soft you want it stiff for this i just put two down each way and then two down for each way here i like to have my cars a little bit softer it's easier to go around down for us this is interesting it depends on what track you're doing um for a track like le mans you're gonna want to you know do this for a track like i don't know sebring or something you're gonna want to do this you know but most most times i just keep it a little bit more towards cornering because as you see here look our top speed is 196 if we put it all the way down to speed here our top speed only goes at four miles per hour but that's not going to gain us a whole lot of time if you put it a little bit more towards cornering our top speed only goes down by 0.2 miles per hour and we got we possibly gained you know almost half a second with the cornering there all right, braking force and brake balance. Now, I used this in uh, Horizon 3 and it worked pretty good for me. Uh, what you want to do is, for your balance of your car, I'm going to apply the setup real quick. But I'm going to show you guys, just so you know what you're doing here. For the balance of your car, you want to go to uh, either handling and you want to toggle. And you want to see what the balance or weight distribution of the car is. As you see, this one is 50%. So this probably isn't the best example, but it's 50%. So basically when I go to tune, I'm gonna want the exact opposite, which would be, well, 50%. Now, if your car was 48%, you're gonna wanna put it at 52. Vice versa, if it's at 40, you want it at 60. So there's a balance and straightness because you, you don't want like one half of your car breaking at a higher pressure or force than the other half. Now brake force, now if you are if you have ABS, you don't wanna lock up, so normally you'd put it at around 85 and that works. Uh, I use ABS sometimes, uh, but even without ABS, I feel like 90 is a good spot for me. So that's where I keep that. And the differential, the differential, it's, it's confusing 
it really doesn't mean a whole lot. I just keep mine at stock because that's that's what it needs to be. Now if you're drifting, you do want to put it at 100 and 100 because I'll give you a lock differential. But really for racing, you want to keep it the way the car was built to be. Now you can change it a little bit if you want to, but I don't really do a whole lot with the differential. So as you see, we got a better 0 to 100, our top speed uh, decreased by 1, but we got a better acceleration. Our braking distance went down by a lot actually. and. We got a whole lot better cornering now. So that is how you tune your car as a beginner. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'm doing this kind of stuff every day, guys. And if you guys do want to know how to do possibly a rally tune, even though there's no rally cars in this game, if you guys want to see a drift tune, I have a couple good drift tunes that I've been using, especially for the Hoonigan. Uh, or if you guys want to see maybe some other different tunes, I don't know what you want to see. Let me know. Is I'll make sure I make that for you. Till then, guys, that's been it's Chris here, and I will be out. Peace.